After watching vi this video lecture, students will be able to define and explore uh, the relative features of uh, weak acids, as well as calculate pH and Ka for weak acid problems. So weak acids, unlike their cousins, strong acids, are only going to partially ionize when placed in solution. Okay, so when we've looked at strong acids, such as HCl, um, we've said that our H plus ion and the chloride ion are going to um, basically be the only species present. They ionize 100%. So basically, our K value is very, very large. Okay, um, but when it comes to weak acids, uh, what ends up happening is that we have an equilibrium position um, that kind of predominates uh, towards our reactants. So we do get some H plus um, and the anion in solution. However, most of the species present is going to be the original acid. Okay, so in these cases, K is going to be small, indicating that ionization is only occurring to a small percentage. Okay, so this small K, which we will define as Ka, indicating that it is an acid disassociation process. Um, but when we think about our equilibrium positions re relative to acids, we're going to treat them very similarly to how we've treated all of our other equilibrium positions. Uh, now, many weak acids guys have an acidic proton that is attached directly to elements like oxygen um, or some other uh, relatively high electronegativity uh, value element, okay, so fluorine and things of that sort. Um, if you go ahead and you take a look at all of our uh, weak acid examples we have here, notice that they are all kind of attached to some electron withdrawing uh, element, okay, and that allows the H plus to be pulled off of the acid very easily. Um, and if we look at that from the perspective of uh, electron pushing, you'll notice the following. So if we go ahead and we look at uh, acetic acid here, um, what you notice is that the acidic proton is attached to oxygen. In this case, uh, this oxygen uh, is also attached to a carbon, was attached to another oxygen. So in this case, guys, we have two species that can pull electron density away from this hydrogen. So what ends up happening is that uh, when we have something that's willing to interact with the hydrogen, uh, let's say, you know, a water molecule, the water molecule is going to come and the electrons are going to basically snatch away that uh, uh, proton, okay? These electrons that are in this bond are gonna remain with the acetate ion, and you're gonna end up with H3O plus and your acetate ion, okay, in solution, okay? So these are the two species, right? Okay, and that happens, why? Because we have electron withdrawing um, groups over here that make it where um, producing this hydronium ion, or generically an H plus ion, is relatively uh, easy. So these are weak acids. Let's go ahead and let's talk about uh, Ka more specifically with regards to weak acids. Ka, or the acid di disassociation constant that we've been referring to, um, is really basically just, um, as we've seen in the past, our conjugate acid and our conjugate base um, over our reactants, so products over reactants. Now, in this case, guys, I want you to notice that once again, we excluded H2O, um, even though H2O does participate um, to produce our H3O+, it really um, doesn't have a place in causing an equilibrium shift. Okay, so we exclude H3O, or excuse me, H2O from our equilibrium expressions for the same reason we would in any other example. Okay, so um, Ka, again, guys, indicates the tendency of an acid to ionize in water. The bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid. And since we're talking about weak acids here, we're going to be referring to, obviously, an acid um, that has a Ka value that's very small. Now, most weak acids, your values for your Ka are going to be somewhere in the 10 to the negative 2 to 10 to the negative 10th range. Okay, so very small numbers, um, indicating a very small degree of ionization towards products. Um, and this will become important as we go through our Ka calculations. Okay, so calculations for weak acid um, problems. Basically, guys, first thing we're going to identify are the major, major species that can affect pH. Um, we're always going to be looking at these, and um, this will be especially important for uh, weak acid and weak base problems. So I want you guys to make sure that you are comfortable with identifying what should be showing up in solution when the acid um, ionizes. Okay, we're going to use ice tables uh, to express the equilibrium concentrations, um, just like we've done in the past. And of course, we're going to write Ka in terms of the equilibrium concentrations. 
Um, and we'll be solving for x by the approximation uh, method a lot of times uh, because k is typically small. Um, but if that approximation method is not valid, we're going to have to use quadratic like we would um, for the previous uh, equilibrium problems that we've done. Okay, And of course, we calculate all concentrations and or pH of the solutions um, based on what we get at equilibrium. So we'll look at each of these um, steps. We're going to kind of look at it from the perspective of having pH and solving for Ka, and then having Ka and solving for pH. Um, so there's multiple approaches to these types of problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at this problem where we're calculating Ka uh, from the pH of a weak acid. Okay, so they've told us that we're calculating the acid ionization constant, the Ka value, uh, for an acid. Um, with a 0 0.10 molar solution uh, having a measured pH of 2.05. Okay, so they've given us an initial concentration of our weak acid, and they've given us the pH of this uh, solution that contains this acid. Okay, so we're going to set up that ice table. Okay, we're going to plug in our initial values. Okay, so initially we're going to have only the acid um, and none of the ionization products. We're going to indicate our changes here. Um, a decrease in our HA, uh, increase in both of our H plus and A minus um, ions, and we set up our equilibrium expression. Okay, now um, Ka, the equilibrium expression for this particular problem, of course, is going to be H plus times A minus all over the concentration of HA. Okay, so obviously we need to figure out what X is. Okay, now in this case, guys, they gave us pH. Um, of our solution. And remember, pH is equal to the negative log of H plus or H3O plus, however you want to look at it. So this piece of information actually gives us the tools we need to solve for our H plus concentration. Okay, so if we go ahead and we take the anti-log, okay, so our concentration of our H plus will be equal to um, 10 to the negative 2.05 or um, the uh, negative uh, pH value. Okay, so if we go ahead and plug this into our calculator, this will give us 8.9 times 10 to the negative third okay, molar. So that is our H plus concentration um, at equilibrium. Now, the nice thing about that is, is that our H plus is going to correspond to our X value. So this actually equals X. And if I know my equilibrium concentration of X, I can subsequently solve for uh, the concentration of HA and the concentration of A minus at equilibrium. Okay, so um, we know that uh, both H plus and A minus, the concentration of each of those is going to be equal to um, our X value. Okay, so that's pretty easy. They made that easy on us. Okay, and then to solve for the concentration of HA at equilibrium, I'm going to take my 0 0.10 and subtract out my 8.9 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, and we'll plug that into our calculator and we're going to 0.09 uh, molar as our concentration for our HA. Okay, and now we can plug all of these species into our equilibrium expression. It will be 8.9 times 10 to the negative third times concentration of 8.9 times 10 to the negative third for A minus. Okay, all divided by the 0 0.1. 0 minus 8.9 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, and this is going to give us uh, what 8.7 times 10 to the negative fourth in terms of our Ka value. So now that we've gone ahead and calculated Ka um, from pH, we're going to go ahead and analyze um, a slightly different problem. In this particular situation, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate pH from Ka. So it's the reverse process um, that we've been doing. So what we're going to go ahead and do is again um, identify the species present in solution, set up our ice table, okay, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write our equilibrium expression. So in this case, uh, K of course um, is going to be equal to H plus um, times A minus all over the concentration of HA. So if we go ahead and we plug in our equilibrium expression values um, relative to X, we're going to have X squared over 0 0.122 uh, minus x. Okay, um, so now that we have this set up, we also know our Ka value. So that's equal to 5.7 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, because this is just a simple Ka or, or equilibrium problem, uh, we can go ahead and apply the same rules that we have in the past. So what we're going to do is because Ka is so small, we're going to see if we can just drop this x down here. Um, and subsequently solve for our x in a simplified way. 
So we're going to go ahead and simplify the Ka expression, and that will give us the following equilibrium expression. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and solve for our uh, x. So x squared is going to equal 6.95 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, and we're going to take the square root of both sides so we can get x all by itself, which will be uh, 0 0.0083 molar. Now, because we dropped x, before we go ahead and solve for our pH, uh, we want to make sure that the assumption that we just made uh, with the dropping of the x here was acceptable. So if we go ahead and do our percentage check, what we find out is that um, our, our percent error associated with um, this problem, or the dropping of the x, is going to be equal to 6.8%. Okay, so because it's more than 5%, we can't make this assumption here. So we're actually going to have to go um, the long way and approach this problem with the quadratic. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take this equation and manipulate it and uh, basically solve the equation uh, and have everything on one side equal to zero. Okay, so when we do that manipulation, what we end up with is the following equation, uh, which we then plug back into the quadratic, and we will get these two answers from our equation. And obviously, we cannot have a negative x value, we can't have a negative concentration, so this option is out. And our x value is subsequently going to be this one right here. Okay, so this x value here corresponds to the x value at equilibrium, which corresponds to the H plus concentration at equilibrium. So that's what we're going to utilize to solve our pH of the solution. So we're going to take the negative log of x, okay, or the negative log of H plus. Um, and when we do that, we get the following answer, which is 2.09, okay, which is an acidic pH, okay, and the pH of this particular weak acid. Now, some of you may be wondering, hey, well, how did I know that this was even going to be a weak acid problem? They didn't actually indicate um, that it was a weak acid. Well, they sort of did because they gave us a Ka with such a small uh, uh, value, and that usually corresponds to the weak acid uh, characteristics.